Good day, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, we moved our price action training because of French elections, and uh, today we will talk uh, how the Fre about how the French elections may affect the financial markets. So today it's very important to understand the volatility that might happen uh, just after Sunday open and generally on Monday, although I don't think that uh, there will be something uh, big, big happening in the first round because probably the market is already pricing in. Maybe even if Le Pen wins the first round, it's already priced in, but you should expect volatility. Uh, we will talk about uh, that today. So uh, I will uh, first go with Riz's disclaimer, then uh, we will proceed with today's agenda. Riz's disclaimer explains that online educational materials are the very markets historian for a global audience. And please take into consideration that information in this session is not suitable for everyone. Admiral Markets UK Ltd takes no responsibility for information and accuracy. This is solely my opinion, and this webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. Uh, risk disclaimer explaining also the CFD and Forex trading are leveraged products and can result in losses that exceed your deposits, so please understand all the risks involved before proceeding to live trading. And this video is not part of the .co.uk website, but the globaluse.com website. Okay, so my name is Nenad, and today uh, we will talk about candidates, economic impact, CAC 40, volatility versus price earning ratio. We need to explain this and how to trade the elections. If you want to put a little bit of excitement, well, you can do, but as I say, you should do it with lower lever leverage and leverage will be dropped to 1.50 just to safeguard your account. But uh, I will show you what might happen now before the first round and uh, after the first round. So I don't expect volatility that big as, let's say, after the second round. But there are also some other things that we should consider because not many people know what uh, is, is going on in Europe, what is going on in France. So that is what I will try to explain you today. Although I also invite you guys to read my article. Uh, as you know, I already uh, published the article on Admiral Markets uh, Traders blog. Uh, how the French elections may affect uh, financial markets and in case you missed it this is uh, the the piece that I did and it's maybe it's not that long you can read it so I explained what might happen I also provided euro dollar chart and so on so you might be interesting to read it if you haven't already done it so now we will talk about uh, candidates first. So we have 11 people that, uh, well, that uh, will try to get presidential election to their favor. And definitely, I need to say that, uh, in my opinion, guys, everything that I speak today treated as my opinion. Okay, so don't uh, think that it will or will not happen, it's just, a, well, a personal opinion. So, 11 presidential candidates and uh, definitely this will be the test for the Eurozone. I personally think that uh, these elections will be the test for Eurozone unity, okay? And uh, we will see how Eurozone will handle possible surprises in the market. We need to say that out of all these 11 candidates, the, bi the biggest question for me and I think for the majority of uh, people is, as I already explained, is whether Marine Le Pen will win the elections or she will actually lose. So as I already explained, to me this is pretty much binary, Le Pen or not Le Pen. It's all about that. We have Francois Fillon, okay, the leader of Republicans, Benoit Hamon, Emmanuel Macron, Nicolas Dupont-Aignan, 
Jean-Luc Mélenchon, Nathalie Arthaud, Marine Le Pen, François Asselineau, Philippe Potou, Jean Lassalle, and Jacques Cheminade. So all of these candidates are possible winners. We, you need to always to treat it as that. Who would have thought that Trump would win, right? Who would have thought that Brexit will happen? So you need to treat it always as possible surprise. But if we talk about realistic prognosis and something that is in focus, we have, let's say, three candidates and one additional candidate that has been running good so far. So last couple of weeks, it, it, he's, he's been a little bit more active and his popularity grew. So we have Emmanuel Macron. We also have François Fillon, Marine Le Pen, and finally Jean-Luc Mélenchon. So those are candidates that are favorites at this point, at this stage. We need to watch polls, guys. Polls are always changing. Okay. So I have cited the sources for all the information here, so I don't need to repeat. You can see it at the bottom left. So Financial Times, polls of all, of all polls here. Who is leading in national opinion polls in France? Here we have Emmanuel Macron, 24%, Marine Le Pen, 23%, François Fillon, 19%, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, 19%. So these four are actually favorites. Now, I need to say that uh, there is a possibility that stocks are already pricing in the possible first round outcome because French stocks closed 1.6% on Tuesday, okay? And it happened after the recovery from the worst intraday sell-off since the UK voted to leave the European Union. So what I think is possibly that investors are hedging their positions and they are piling into safe haven assets like US Treasury and gold. Now guys, if you open current price on dollar yen, okay, I will I will do it immediately just to show you here what's going on in, on dollar yen. Watch this guys, this spike in dollar yen. Uh, I think why is this happening? Because investors are hedging and they are moving into safe haven assets. U.S. Treasury helped dollar yen to spike to the upside. Now there is, of course, profit taking because of this resistance here. But this generally can be looked as pre-election volatility. So guys, please ensure that if you trade you trade really with low risk or you or you definitely need to use volatility protection settings from Admiral Markets Traders Room, you can activate it there. So definitely I think that either Sunday open or let's say Monday can be huge or it will nothing will happen. Because now at this point we see definitely some price action that Telling, that is telling me that investors have been hedging globally across markets. U.S. Treasury is up, dollar yen is up, okay? Also, guys, don't forget that out of all these favorites here on official polls, Marine Le Pen has the biggest chance to win the first round of elections. If she does that, it will not be seen as surprise because markets are already expecting that Marine Le Pen wins the first round. And here, guys, you can see different lines. So as I said, this is poll of all polls. It's tracking the national opinion polls. And here, guys, you can see how it changed across from February till May. Manri Le Pen was actually leading the polls. Now Emmanuel Macron actually is slightly above her. While Filon and Mélenchon are actually very close. Okay, 
we can see here also a full list of individual opinion polls for the first round of the French presidential elections. So, well, you can see here, guys, that this is different sample that has been taken out for this official poll. But again, Macron is leading 25%, Le Pen is behind 22%, Fillon, Malanchon, 19%, Come on, 7.5%. Okay? So, here you can see how it changes, but generally, this is how it stands out. Poll of all polls. Now, well, uh, we can, I can maybe say that also Jean-Luc Mélenchon can be a little bit, I, I cannot use maybe the right word, but it, it can be a surprise because the, the, it can be a disruptive candidate. Uh, he is, for example, a fan of Hugo Chavez. And he wants to tax individuals who earn, let's say, approximately four, 400,000 euros or more at a tax rate of 100%. I will go step by step over each candidate. But also, Melanchon, to me, looks like a little bit, maybe, a little bit uh, extreme, okay? So, first we have Le Pen, now we have Melanchon, but generally, of course, uh, Melanchon is not against European Union in that sense as Le Pen. Now, let's start with candidates. Uh, first, guys, Marine Le Pen, okay? Marine Le Pen is, uh, well, I think personally that Marine Le Pen will enter the first round and that she will be, of course, in the runoff, I personally think, between Macron and Marine Le Pen. France should probably will choose between them. Again, my personal opinion only and what I have, what I have, I, I, I've been following the polls, I've been reading a lot, so I think those two candidates might have the biggest chance to enter the second round on May 7th. Okay, so Marine Le Pen is, I expect her to be in runoffs, okay? Uh, but also, you need to know that Marine Le Pen is the leader of National Front, and she took over the uh, National Front leadership from her father in January 2011, okay? And on, in next year, she came third, okay, in presidential elections. Definitely she is popular, but uh, she is also extreme right, okay? She belongs to extreme right wing. Uh, also, he, she is very hard positioned, and uh, in 2010, before being elected as a leader, Marine Le Pen compared Muslims praying in the street to the German occupation. That was what she did in 2010. But again, after 2011, she has softened her tone and uh, let's say that she tried to build good relationship with Jewish community. So she, in my opinion, she is a hard position because as the election approach, well, she always shifts her position from soft to hard. And now she pledged to suspend all legal immigration while new rules were drafted, okay? So I might say that she is a far right. Definitely she wants negotiation in Brussels on a new European Union that will be followed by a referendum. She wants automatic expulsion of illegal immigrants and legal immigration cut to 10,000 per year following an immediate total moratorium. Also, extremists most close and priority to French nationals in social housing and retirement age should be fixed at 60 and 35 hour week assured. That is what she wants. Emmanuel Macron is a possible youngest ever president. Okay? Uh, she, uh, he is a strong candidate 
and he, in my opinion, has also a big chance to win French elections. He was a great student and he later became an investment banker. He is very prog progressive in my opinion, okay? First of all, let's say that he is very fond of digital startups and he prompted a long distance bus market. Uh, he belong maybe in the center, so he is not left and right and he is supporting European Union, of course. He also made a reputation with his Macron law that was a reform bill that allowed shops to open more often on Sundays and he also deregulated some sectors of industry. So he is a progressive candidate. He wants 50 billion public investment plan to cover job training, also exit from coal and shift to renewable energy, infrastructure and modernization. He also wants reimbursement of full cost of glasses, dentures and hearing aids. Big cut in corporation tax and more leeway for companies to renegotiate 35 hour week. Also cut in jobless rate to 7, down from 9.7% uh, as it is now. Also he wants to put a ban on mobile phone use in schools for under 15s and a 500 culture pass for 18 years old. Okay, Emmanuel Macron is a serious in that and uh, as I say he has a big chance, okay, of course along with Marine Le Pen to enter the second round. Let's move on to third candidate. Of course I'm covering only uh, candidates that are in focus, four ones that I think that have the biggest chance according to official polls. François Fillon, okay, Contro uh, he was a bit, con I mean he is a controversy, controversial figure in France. Uh, of course, as if you follow uh, French elections and you might know that his campaign has been rocked by, by different allegations that his wife and two children improperly received public funds. Uh, he initially said he would step aside if he was placed under formal investigation. That was his initial decision. But of course later he changed his mind. He is a centrist and he also studied law. But despite that controversy over public funds, he, as you could see in the beginning of the webinar, is not far behind the two front runners in the polls and still his campaign team remains confident. He might be hard positioned on some stances, okay? For example, removing the wealth tax, tax that he wants, but still uh, he is centrist. Why? Because he wants to scrap half a million public sector jobs at a 35 hour work week, remove wealth tax and to strip jihadists returning from the wars in Iraq and Syria on French nationality. That is hard position, yeah. Requiring, he also required parents in receipt of social allowances to agree to a parental responsibility contract to tackle children's absenteeism or behavior that is disrespectful of the values of the French Republic. He obviously, I mean, that's, uh, he is nationalist in that sense and uh, he thinks that uh, some sort of behavior are very dis dis disrespectful for the values of French Republic. But also, guys, he wants to lift European sanctions on Russia, okay, and he wants to help Syrian President Bashar al-Assad to defeat so-called Islamic State. That is what Francois Fillon wants. And finally, we have last one candidate that is also in focus, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, okay, he is the leader of La France Insoumise or France Unbowed, okay. So he is socialist in nature, but uh, 
definitely with the socialists seeing a meltdown in popular support, well, he, he has gained some popularity over last few weeks, but then again, he has, uh, he's a little bit controversial because he's not fully supporting European Union. He is also backed, uh, you need to know that he's backed up by France Communist Party, and in my opinion, okay, in my opinion, he has some communistic uh, attitudes. For example, tax on wealth. This is, in my opinion, of course, this is very communistic to impose tax on wealth people. Again, what he wants is, okay, to vote from age of 16 and Sixth Republic to replace the existing presidential system. He, is, he wants to assemble to acquire greater powers that are voted in proportional representation. Zero homelessness and full reimbursement for prescribed health care. And he recognizes burnout as an occupational disease. Because of these stances, he is fully backed up by France Communist Party. He was a supporter of European federalism, but now he calls for France to leave European treaties. He thinks that European Union economic liberalism has drained the ability to deliver democratic change. Okay, and again guys, this is how these candidates stand at this point. Okay, this is the current poll. Now, different outcomes. Again, for me, again, as I already explained in my, in my article, it's binary, Le Pen or not Le Pen. Of course, if Jean-Luc Mélenchon won the election, again, it would be a little bit hard to Europe for European Union, but not as hard as if Le Pen won. Well, still, what might happen if Le Pen is a runner-up with just a slight margin behind Macron? Again, what might happen is that markets could react vol uh, with huge volatility if she shows as a runner-up with just a slight margin. What I think is that still May 7th will be the most decisive for markets and for final outcome of French elections. Because the second round is, let's say, more or less, it will happen. Okay? So it's pretty much that we will have second round on May 7, and it, and according to polls, Macron should win elections in the second round. But also what is very important, guys, what is very important for you to understand, okay, very important for you to understand is that France cannot pull out of the Euro without parliamentary vote. That's very important. Once more, for the people who just joined up, these are candidates, Marine Le Pen, Emmanuel Macron, François Fillon, and again, Jean-Luc Mélenchon. And don't be afraid for all of you who don't know what can happen, what might happen is France cannot pull out of the Euro without parliamentary vote. So first of all, parliamentary vote needs to happen before France pulls out of the Euro. That's very important, guys. Very, very important. Without it, it, it's impossible. No matter who will win the elections, who wins. You also need to know that at this point, 
there is no strong parliamentary backup for leaving France out of Eurozone. Now, what is very important to notice? The indicator for Paris market is CAC 40. It represents 40 largest equities in France. CAC 40 stands for Cotation Assisté en Continu. So that is abbreviation for CAC 40. The index can be very volatile. And, of course, it's tradable on Admiral Markets account. You can open the account and you will see CAC 40. This is, okay, here how it looks. And the range of CAC 40 also can be very, very huge. And it tends to follow friend. Of course, it's national instrument, so it, it, it tends to follow also French national pre-polling. So how it changes, you will usually see investors moving in and out of these equities. Also, it's very important for you to know that CAC40 is the largest foreign ownership of stocks. And it's more than any other European index. It has the backup in manufacturing, banking, construction, and services. But it also has a high valuation with an average PA ratio above 21. What does it mean? It means that it could get very, very volatile if France return to franc currency. What I think personally it will not happen, it's again as I say my personal opinion, so I don't think it will happen, but of course we always need to have a possibility. As we had a possibility with Brexit, we also had different outcomes with Trump winning US elections, so you guys need to be ready for anything. What I'm 100% sure as a trader, as a, as a person who knows a lot about economy, I'm sure that this index will be very volatile if France returns to franc. Extremely volatile. Hugely volatile. And what can happen is, again, a possible black swan event, if that happens. For that to understand, guys, you need to know what is price to earnings ratio. I know that a lot of you, of course, majority of you, maybe don't know what is price to earnings. Also, you don't need to know. That is why I'm here to explain that to you. And I think it's very important to understand if you want to trade equities or stocks. Price to earnings ratio is the main indicator to value stocks. Okay? So what it essentially means is the number of years of earnings required to pay back the investment in purchasing the stock. The higher the price to earnings ratio, the more expensive and longer it takes to pay back the stock. Normal market valuations range around 14 to 16. So the higher the price earning, the more overvalued the stock is. And during recessions, PE can drop below 10. At this point, guys, we have high valuation Average P-E ratio is above 21. So what does it mean? It means that it's expensive and it takes longer to pay back the stock. So this is important for you to understand equities and indices. Very important. Tools that you should use if trading 
French elections are definitely correlation matrix. You need to use correlation matrix. I will show you how to do it right now. Chart trader, that is actually tick trader. And also tick trader can help you to see ticks on one minute time frame. And of course, have your mini terminal set up for possible change in your leverage or your risk or if you need an alarm you should definitely have it set up. Don't forget that you should also use volatility protection tool, okay? Don't forget volatility protection tool, go to your trader room and activated if you want to trade French elections. Now guys, let's move on to live charts. Okay? Live chart. What can happen with CAC 40? How is it traded on French elections? What I think is that after Sunday, there should be volatility or there won't be any volatility. If markets are pricing in possible first round first round outcome, we need to know that maybe nothing will happen. It will just be normal volatility, there will be no gaps. But if something happens such as let's say slight runoff, uh, let's say that Le Pen is slightly behind Macron or that she is maybe a huge winner in the first round, initially CAC40 might drop further. For that guys, we definitely need to use different settings here. We will use monthly pivot points and we will move on to higher time frames to see what might happen. Here guys, you see that CAC40 is in huge uptrend. Huge, huge, huge uptrend here, okay? And definitely what it tells us that, you know guys how it, it's in market. When there is a trend and when there is a break of trend, it's even stronger, okay? Okay, so you need to watch this trend line on four hour time frame, okay? Uh, if France shows any sign, okay, that uh, Le Pen might win, okay, and uh, that uh, anti Brissel candidate may win, this index should drop heavily. And what I think is if that happens is just open your four hour guys chart, put a standard trend line here, and watch this confluence zone here. If this zone breaks to the downside, this should be next target and here this could be even next target. That would mean again that CAC40 will see the biggest sell-off and it will fall to its lowest level since let's say the end of February, right? 8th of February, if that happens. But now what, what market is actually telling us that it's pricing in a possible victory for Macron. Because after this initial sell-off, investors returned to buy CAC40. Again, guys, dollar-yen chart suggests that this is the escape to safe heaven such as U.S. Treasury. So U.S., yeah, so dollar-yen might get here. Don't be confused. If you want to trade French elections, you go with CAC40. This is the best indicator for me, in my opinion, for French elections. CAC40 and, of course, uh, the, 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 the official poll. 
So if the official poll says, as I already showed, that Macron is leading at this point, you should see CAC40 going up. And you see how it's going up. Le Pen, bang, it should drop. So pay attention to CAC40. Next thing is Euro dollar. Euro dollar again is pricing in, as I already explained guys, if you followed my live trading webinar yesterday, I said I would short Euro dollar here, but I didn't short it just because I see that markets are being nervous a little bit and there is a lot of different things that are being priced in in the market at this point. So I'm just staying away from trading, let's say, Euro dollar at this point because I want to see first what might happen. But definitely Euro dollar is bought on dips because this was my level to sell. And you see here, guys, if you sold it initially, 35 pips. It's okay if you compare, of course, ATR because 35 pips is more than ATR here. Even if you put ATR 14, we can do it. I always have ATR 14. Making 50% of ATR in an intraday trade is always good. Okay? So you see, it's, it's even better. So if you took 35 pips from my yesterday live trading session, then definitely you could have made some pips. And you could have made some money. But the problem here is it, it, it doesn't drop. It, it simply won't drop. So what might happen is markets are pricing in. They're pricing in here. Watch this now. I will open gold chart. Gold is also going up. So what does it tell you? That, that investors are simply going to safe heaven such as gold and U.S. treasuries. Euro dollar is also up. So that means that definitely if there is some relief, as I already explained in the article, Euro dollar has the chance to break 1.09 level. On, a, let's say, Le Pen win, it should drop initially. But again, guys, even if Le Pen wins the first round, I don't personally think that it will has it will have a big 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 immediate impact on euro dollar the immediate impact on euro dollar would be only if marine le pen wins the first round with a huge margin over macron let's say that she wins with 5 or 10% margin that would additionally spark the fear of frexit or france france ex exiting eurozone and this trend line will be compromised but again, I think that euro dollar might drop even to this region and further fears might even drop it further. But as I say, markets are not predicting it at this point. So again, we will all know what will happen on Sunday, early Monday, right? And don't be fooled. Pre-polling is very important. On Friday, we might see some pre-polling that can shake the markets. That is why brokers need to lower the leverage to 1.50. It's a sort of protection to both you and brokers. So don't, don't think it's not okay. In these kind of, in these kind of trading conditions, dropping the leverage to 1.50 is perfectly fine. There will be guys days where you will be trading normally. So don't think that it's something that it's not normal. It's perfectly normal. If you have any questions, guys, now go ahead and ask me. Uh, I hope that I explained in the best what might happen. I also tried to explain the best over each candidate, Marine Le Pen, so again, focus is on Marine Le Pen, Emmanuel Macron, François Fillon, 
and, Mar and again, Jean-Luc Mélenchon. That is the focus. Official polls are favoring Macron. Again, that is why we see euro dollar up, gold up, US dollar yen because of US treasuries up. And you can see, as I already explained, pound dollar also has been bought on dips. If you traded the setup that I presented yesterday on Admiral Markets website, here I will show you, you could see actually that it's been pretty much pretty much uh, good analysis, very accurate analysis. Of course, pound dollar is not, uh, well, I can, I can say that it's not uh, the indicator for French elections, but yet again, it, it's also being bought from the level that I explained. So definitely, there is some volatility in the market. It is good because you can actually trade it. So guys, thank you for listening. I hope that everything is clear now. So if you want to trade elections, use volatility protection settings. Use Admiral Markets here. This is very useful correlation matrix, guys. Also, let me just show you correlation matrix before I call it a day. Open correlation matrix. Put the pairs that you want to trade. Focus is on euro dollar, of course. CAC40 index, okay, add it here and see the correlation on intraday time frames with CAC40. If you don't see displayed, it, it needs some moments to lo load up, okay. If you don't see it, you can go with, it, it needs some moments to load up, so you should be able to see it. But definitely go with the chart that shows correlation. You can use even daily 50 bars that corresponds to intraday trading because it's only 50 bars of daily, so it corresponds to intraday trading. You will see that euro dollar here has 33% of correlation, but also guys, very volatile pairs such as G GBP New Zealand and dollar yen have negative, this has negative correlation. So dollar yen is negative, GBP New Zealand is positive, Definitely, of course, Euro New Zealand positive and also Euro dollar positive. So use correlation matrix. It can help. If you guys, I know that many of you like to trade volatile pairs, but have in mind that CSC40 will have an impact, strong impact on New Zealand crosses, especially GBP New Zealand. That is the beast in Forex trading. And Euro New Zealand, that is even more volatile than Euro dollar. So pay attention to that, guys. Thank you for listening. Uh, join up on uh, post-election webinar on Monday where Chris and I will talk about setups. It will be a session recap, but also it will be recap after the first round of elections. Thank you for listening. Talk to you soon. Cheers, everyone. Trade safe.